Welcome. We're here today, always bringing glory to God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's our privilege. We are the friends of the Wild Olive Branch Ministries. I'm Kyle Kopp here with David Vance. And again, we want to welcome you. And we also want to take a moment and acknowledge some friends of the Wild Olive Branch Ministries in Lomax. And namely, a certain fellow by the name of Jeff Love. Hi, Jeff. Jeff, we just want to say hi to you today. Absolutely. You were such a blessing to Mr. Roger Ham, and you continue to be a blessing to David and I and Cop Farms and Cop Custom Harvesting. And we just wanted to make sure that we reached out to you today and said hello. We're here at WTJR in the, in the great city of Quincy, Illinois, blessed to be in the studio, blessed to be a part of what this ministry here in Quincy is doing. And uh, we just want to make sure we acknowledge those that we know are friends in the Lord and friends of the ministry. And uh, we want to be friends as well to the ministry here at WTJR. That's right. And say hi to your wife and children too, please. A absolutely. We, we continue to pray as always for all of you. And, and uh, we think especially of Zeph as, he, as he's serving our country. And we're very proud of him. So it's just good to be here. Yeah. And I'd like to say hi to my granddaughter, Jessica. Ah, so hi, Jessica, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> and to our granddaughters in Alaska, Hannah and Hadassah. Yeah, praise God. So, hello, 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 and hello. All right, let's get on. Let's pray, Father in heaven. We do thank you for the awesome privilege that we have to come before you today. That we are free here in America, the United States of America. And we do not by any means take for granted, Lord, your grace and your mercy and your love that have been shown abroad to us here. And, oh Lord, we pray we would take your gospel to the nations and to our neighborhoods. Lord, we thank you for the men and the women in the field, that they are kept, spirit, soul, and body. We agree together, Lord God, that you will continue to do what only you can. And we thank you for that, Lord. Give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the uh, last time we were together, brother, you were sharing on hunger. And, of course, as we talked along there, you know, the Lord dropped a, a nugget in my spirit, you know, reminding me that we are always hungry. Right. But what is it that we're hungry for? Right. And we talked a little bit about the distractions. And, you know, as, as, as we were preparing for today's, for today's taping, and uh, I uh, opened the Word, I, I opened it to Colossians, and I just want to read... I want to remind all of you out there, okay, as we talked about hunger and the things that so easily beset us and distract us and the things we find ourselves hungry for that aren't the gospel. You know, they just aren't the gospel. And there's a reason, because there's some things here that we have to put to death, and I'm going to read them to you. Now, we're going to Colossians. We're in the third chapter, and I'm going to start in the fifth verse. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you once walked when you lived in them, but now put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and foul talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old nature with its practices and have put on the new nature, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there cannot be Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free man, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, Holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another. If one has a complaint against the other, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Here it comes. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do 
in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. I mean, what, what better way to summarize what the Lord brought forward? Right. right. I, mean, I mean, basically just repeated what we shared, what we know, but took it directly back to the Word. It just excited me when I read absolutely, that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Matter of fact, turn to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. While you were talking that, I was reading this, and I thought, you know, he, he talks about not giving up, you know, to keep on in your hunger and everything. And in verse 28 it says, Has thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, and neither does he get weary, neither there, there is no searching of his understanding. What that means is he doesn't get tired, he doesn't give up, yeah. he, he doesn't wear out, and he has all understanding, so there's no need to search his understanding because he has it all. Yeah. You know. Now, in verse 29, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Praise God. That wait upon could be also translated hope in. Hmm. They that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. strength. Because that's where our hope is. Amen. That's where our faith is. Absolutely. So, you know, I got to thinking about waiting upon the Lord. And, and, and I've seen people, uh, there was a, a, a man that I knew, every time you'd say, well, how are you doing? Just waiting on the Lord. What are you waiting for? Uh, well, I'm just waiting for him to do something, you know. But, but... It's kind of like we had a few sessions ago when we talked about Moses, you know. <clears throat> he, he started crying out to the Lord, you know, well, there's no avenue of escape when they were back to, had their backs against the Red Sea. And the Lord says, stretch out your rod and you do it. That's right. So God. there's a time to do that and there is a time to wait. Amen. Now, usually when you wait upon the Lord... That waiting period is not just to sit there and do nothing. Right. But that waiting period is time to prepare. Okay. For example, uh, if, if your wife was expecting a baby, you found, just found out that you're expecting a baby, and you're two months into this pregnancy, that means you've got seven more months to go. Mm-hmm. There's a time to wait. You have to wait for that baby to come forth. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, are you going to sit there and do nothing? No. What are you going to do? You're going to prepare. How? Well, you start thinking about the nursery. All right. And, and getting the supplies. Okay. And the diapers. And right. The, and, and, and you also start preparing in prayer. Right. You start confessing what it is you believe exactly. you want God to do over that child. And even, even as young as my little babies were, you know, I started praying for them for godly mates. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a whole list of things that you find yourself doing. That's right. Some folks choose to wait and find out when the baby's born what the sex is we right. didn't right you know when we found out when we could what the sexes were then right. we started building accordingly well sure sure you know? and not only that uh, not only are you waiting you know uh, do, wait upon the lord for this baby to come forth you're 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 waiting and and preparing the room and and, and the diapers and getting the proper clothes and everything <clears throat> But the Lord is preparing your wife's body right. for childbirth. Yeah. You know, she, she's, she's, her hips change a little bit. That, that path down the, down the canal it, it, it opens. Yep. And, and so the, her, 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 her breast fills with milk yep. for the baby and so on and so forth. So 
the, her body is waiting upon the Lord as well. Absolutely. So what's that say to us? We need to wait physically because the Lord's going to change things. If we're sure that it's him, yeah. and, 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 and when the baby, uh, when the doctor says, you, you know, you're going to have a baby, or, or her menstrual cycle says something's awry here, right. we're, we're probably pregnant, then, then that period of time switches. And, and so you don't just sit around and do nothing. You, you prepare, you, and, you, and you are prepared. Well, a wise husband would do just as you suggest. Right. Now, I didn't do so well at that in the beginning, <laughs> but I learned that it's better to prepare, and it's better to help my wife and get to know what she needs and try to help sure. with some of those wants and desires that they have when they're going through that right. period of their lives. I'll tell you, it, but it takes a conscious choice. Yeah, you know, I you, just, to wait on the Lord, David, isn't always an easy thing. Oh, I know. And, and I just said something that kind of shocked me, that, that I, it had to be the Holy Ghost. I, I just said, you prepare and the Lord prepares you. Yeah. Now, you think about that for a minute, folks. You're waiting upon the Lord to do something you know he said to do it. Get prepared. And let him prepare you. Yeah, amen. Let him prepare you. How do you get prepared? How does he prepare you? He prepares you with his scriptures. Yeah. You know, he, he gives you faith. He, he, he exercises faith on your behalf. Yeah. You know, he does. that you're going to, to do the right things mm. and go the right places. Yep. And, and there's something else that I, I, I want you to... While we're waiting upon the Lord, uh, we get sometimes we seem to get tired of that wait. Yeah. Especially the last, if you're if you're go back to that example where the woman with the baby, that last couple three four weeks. Yeah. You know, gets pretty. You know, oh, let's have this baby anytime. I'm ready. Yep. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yep. Okay. If she's ready. What's stopping it? She's ready mentally, but God's not quite done preparing the body yet. Right. So the, the, prepar the preparation of the physical mm -hmm. is not quite there. When the right time comes, the baby comes forth. Right. When the right time comes for what you're waiting upon the Lord for, that product will come forth, whether it be a, a spouse that needs to be saved, whether it's a child that needs to come out of drugs or off alcohol, uh, come back to the Lord. There's numerous things that you're yeah. waiting for. And, and, and let me go to another scripture here in Mark chapter 5. I'm just, I'm not going to read too much here. Because we all kind of know the story, but uh, in verse cha in chapter five of Mark, verse twenty-two, and behold, there come one of the rulers of the synagogue, uh, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, "My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live." See, he was issuing a statement of faith there. Absolutely. Come and lay your hands on her that she will be healed, may be healed, and she shall live. She's at the point of death. And Jesus went with him, and the people uh, followed him and thronged him. In other words, they, there were so many surrounded that just him. surrounded him and couldn't even go. Yep. And this is where the woman of the issue of, uh, with the issue of blood came and touched the hem of his garment. He turns around... And says, "Who touched me?" So on and so forth, uh, because he was he, he had such power to the uh, he had such sensitivity to the touch of faith that when she touched his garment, even though she didn't touch him, it, it, it faith flowed into her. Right. Because that's what she was believing for. Uh, he he turned around and says, "Who touched my clothes?" And, and his disciples started 
saying, well, how can you say that? I mean, you're, the crowd's touching you all around. You know, he said, but this woman uh, came to him in fear and trembling, knowing what was done in her, and came and fell down before him in verse 33 and told him all the truth. And he says, daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague or thy yeah. affliction. Yeah. Then there came a guy and said, uh, from the from the house of the ruler, uh, synagogue's house, and says, uh, your daughter's dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. But Jesus heard that word, and he says, turn to the ruler of the synagogue in verse 36. It says, be not afraid, only believe. Mm -hmm. He had a choice. That's right. He could believe what the uh, man came from the synagogue said, mm -hmm. your daughter's dead, don't bother the master anymore, mm -hmm. or you could uh, believe what Jesus told him, be not afraid, only believe. But my point, what I want to share here, because we're talking about waiting upon the Lord, is delay, and Jesus was delayed here, Yeah. delay is not denial. That's right. When when Jesus was delayed from coming to this guy's house, it wasn't a denial that he was going to do something. When you're waiting for something for Jesus to accomplish or bring to pass, the wait, the delay in it coming, because we all tend to want to rush the answer. Well, yeah, absolutely do. Delay is not denial that he is not going to deny you. Right. Jesus will not deny you unless by the words of your mouth you, you know and void it. Right. But delay from the Lord is not denial. It's true. When, when, when he is ready, it will come. Yep. I don't care if he has to raise her from the dead. Yeah. He, he, would, he would do that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's what he that's did. That's what he did, right. So he, he came to the guy's house anyway. He says, don't, don't be afraid, only believe. He came to him and raised the daughter from the dead. Did. Yep. So he accomplished what this guy was waiting upon yes. for the Lord. And yet, the, I'm telling you, for somebody out there in particular, you've been waiting a long, 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 long time for this to come to pass. The delay that seems like the Lord is just not wanting to do it, not wanting to come. Delay is not denial. He will come and what you're believing for will be accomplished. Amen. Praise God. That's good. In Jesus' name. That's good. In Jesus' name. That's good. So, Well, you know, you talk about denial and you also talk about that what happens is, you know, you're encouraging people to wait on the Lord, and that just because something appears to be one way doesn't mean that's how it finishes. That's correct. That is the single, probably strongest um, deterrent there is for believers, because they'll be believing on a subject, they know they're waiting on the Lord, they know they've heard the Lord's voice, but they put a time frame on it. Right. They, they, we have that tendency and to put it in a box and go, okay, if it doesn't happen by such and such, then, well, it must not have been the Lord. Right. We can't live that way. No. I'll give you, an, I'll give you a good example. My wife came from a Catholic background. I came from a Methodist background. When we got married, her family was not particularly happy that we were getting married because I wasn't Catholic. Right. Understandable. <clears throat> uh, and at the same time, my family wasn't particularly happy that I was marrying a Catholic. So right. what? We were in love with each other. We're still married. So after 43 years. So that testimony stands upon itself. Yeah. It was the Lord. I guarantee it was. But her dad was a non-believer. Hmm. And we started believing for him shortly after we were married. And we were believing that and we witnessed to him at different times. We talked about the word. We just straight out witnessed to him at, in later years. Yeah. And no, 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 I'm not ready. You know, I'm not, I don't want anything to do with that. Blah, blah, blah. 
about, uh, we waited approximately 30 years. 30 years? And on his deathbed, mm -hmm. He, uh, my sons had all came in, five of them, we have five boys. They all came in, we were all standing around the bed. <clears throat> and he pointed to the middle one hmm. and says, tell me about Jesus, your Jesus. Hmm. So Jeff led him to the Lord. Praise God. And it wasn't two days and he had passed away. Wow. So that waiting, I mean, you talk about a long delay, yeah. but we were not denied. That's right. Our faith was not denied. Now, did you say that was three days? No, maybe that was 30 days you said that you waited. No, maybe it was 30 months. Mm -hmm. Hmm, no, hmm, maybe that was 30 years. Yeah. That's the thing that, that concerns me, folks, is that, that you, I want you to catch what my brother just said. 30 years him and his bride prayed. 30 years they waited and, 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 and pleaded and came before the Lord and said, we want to share the gospel with him. We want to see him saved. 30 years. i got to say it again. It just keeps resonating in my heart. 30 years. There's some of you people out there that can't wait three minutes. You, you quit factoring God out, but quit trying to put him in a time box. Drive on, brother. 30 years. So, my point in this is, and this is all glory to the Lord. Amen. Because it took, uh, uh, let me tell you, you talk about having a chance to waver. We had multiple chances you to waver. You darn straight you did. You know, and so we, we stuck, but we stuck to it. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say, when you wait upon the Lord, like it said in, in Isaiah, the 40th chapter there, he did renew our strength. He did. He had to. Because, to be honest with you, we were getting weary I'm sure. of believing. I'm sure. And it looked like it was hopeless. Yeah. It really, truly did. Because, you know, they were from Chicago area. We had three hours to travel every time we wanted to see him and three hours home. So we couldn't be there all the time. Right. And uh, so there was multiple opportunities to say, well, I guess the Lord ain't going to work. Hmm. But I'm telling you, delay is not denial. Amen. Waiting upon the Lord, continuing to believe God for what you want to believe God for. And he will answer that prayer if you faint not. Praise God. And he told you right there that he will give you strength so that you don't faint. That's right. And so that you don't get worried. What is that? What is, where does your strength come by? The, word, the strength comes from the word. Yeah. And from knowing, to know that you know that you know that you know. If, if you don't know that you know that you know that, know that the word's going to work, then you better, you better get in and start listening to the Word and get faith built up in your heart Amen. about it because we claimed it and we stuck to it. And yeah. I'm telling you, we got our answer. So it's, it's, it's amazing that, like I say, we're in a fast, uh, a fast-moving, fast-paced society. Yeah, we are. We're in an instant uh, us Americans are in an instant world. Now, we want everything now and yesterday, you know. <laughs> yeah, why didn't, have this, why didn't we have this 10 years ago? Right, exactly. Yeah. But when you went overseas, and when I went overseas, the, pay, the, the pace of the lifestyle is at a much slower rate. Yeah, it is. But they still have the same issue that every person on the face of the earth does. Yep. Will God do it or will, will he not? I say, if it's based on the word, he will do it. And if you faint not and hold your profession of faith, it will be accomplished. But you have to do something and you have to realize that the enemy's going to come at you and say, it ain't going to happen. Oh, yeah. And you're going to have to shuck it off of you and say, yes, it will. Right. You know, it will come to pass. Amen. And it did. I'll tell you what, 
as I as I think back at the, at the different seasons in my own life, right. okay, and I think back, I can tell you some marked areas that I waited on God a long time. Yeah, I can tell you. I could take a moment and tell you a couple that that I didn't wait, and tell you how disastrous it turned out. Right. But I can also tell you that on some of those on some of those fronts, you know what I expected and wanted in a moment's time. It was it was years, brother, years. But God, you're absolutely right. It, 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 just because time passes doesn't mean God's denying us. That's right. It just means that it's we got to wait. Exactly. And wait for Americans is tough. I took folks a hundred year step back in time when I got off of that airplane in this year. Now, the, the community, the downtown, the capital of the city, okay, it's fairly fast forward. But you, you go, out of the, go out of that city a mile, and you're in grass huts, and no vehicles, and no electricity, and no water, and no TV, and no Wii, and no Xbox, and, and no iPod, and no iPad, and no telephone, you know. And, and, and you realize that's what was so redeeming to me was, was that that was such a encouraging thing about the body of Christ. Right. But we can't stand to sit in a church service for an hour and ten minutes that's anymore. Right. That's right. You know, the, the, they keep telling us that these, these ministers are there to tone these messages down to 15 to 20 minutes because that's all of our attention span. That's because that's how we've trained our attention span. And there's no anointing there. Correct. If you had the anointing, I will guarantee you, you could sit there for 15 hours straight yep. and not even have to get up and go to the bathroom. Oh, we saw it. We saw it there. And we these, saw it, and, too. And I the, saw it in the Ukraine, we too. We saw it in these people. We saw it in the services. Folks, those people worshiped and praised the Lord, and Amen. they danced, and they shouted, and they were exuberant. Amen. And, I mean, there's something we've so lost in America. And I, I want to encourage you. They had you. the hunger. They had the hunger. And I want to encourage all of you. Be hungry for the Lord. Oh, Be hungry for, yeah. for the things of God. Amen. Be hungry for corporate worship. Be hungry for being before Him and just enjoying His presence. When His yeah. presence falls upon you, it will change your demeanor, your perspective, and your life. Yeah. Be hungry for Him. Amen. I, I, Ever be being filled. In the Ukraine, they had a, a church of 10,000 has a study every, uh, all night on Friday nights. All night. Yeah. And this old woman of 80 stood there and praised God. What an awesome sight. We need to pray. Oh, standing up. Hallelujah. The harvest is plenty.